We're finding that within this growth mindset, the more students are engaged in productive struggle, the more they're seeing the potential of their own learning in and around mathematics. So today we will see productive struggle. I predict that some kids will kind of be challenged by some of the pieces in our problem today. There's that fine line of productive struggle and then frustrating struggle. And so as an instructor, it's finding that balance and knowing what pivotal question to pose so that the productive struggle continues, but in route to that fruition of being able to problem solve. In terms of productive struggle, I think that that's key for students to learn. And so giving them problems that challenge them, that they really have to think about how should I go about tackling this? What are some different strategies that I could use? So now we're gonna read this again. What I'd like to have happen now is I'd like partner B, my partner B, to read to partner A. And now uh, both partners will describe the quantities in the problem. So remember in the first time we didn't use quantities, now the second time around we're going to use quantities. I would show them multiple ways to multiply fractions or using bar models. Students were kind of pushing against me and we talked about the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset and that sometimes having more than one way to solve a problem is going to be helpful for you and we can't always just rely on one thing because that's what we're comfortable with, that we have to stretch ourselves brain is a muscle and the only way that your muscle is going to grow and be stronger is by trying new things. Partner A's, I'd like you to discuss with partner B what your drawing uh, looked like or what your model looked like. I drew a, a focus square around it to represent the frame, uh, yeah, and in the middle I wrote 400 inches to represent the area. And so giving them problems that challenge them so that they're not being spoon-fed how to do a problem and they're going to have a better understanding of the problem and more buy-in if they kind of struggle at first. Why would it be perimeter versus area? Great question. Let's have a discussion with your partner. You got 30 seconds. Go. We already know the area, which is 400 square inches. 400, yeah. And then the perimeter is unknown and the perimeter is basically the wood trim because it's around the yeah, because like a fence is a perimeter around the grass area. Yeah, so, so that's basically yeah, area. And so what I'll do is while students are working on the problems, I'll walk around the room and see some student work that I think would be beneficial for other students to see. And so either I will have the students come up and explain what they've done so far, or I'll bring up the work myself and ask questions to the class. All right, so we're going to look at two different students work. Here the student has a model, right? And they have 400 inches squared. They drew a picture of the picture. And then they have four sides and they have question marks for the length of four sides. So we have two answers, 100 inches and 80 inches. So with your partner, I want you to discuss why do we have two different answers? So 25 on each. I've really worked on encouraging kids to try more than one way. And it's been very powerful to see kids' reactions once they start using a new strategy. You put 100? No, it's 20. Why is it 20? I just realized that. Why? Because length times width, that's, and that's how you get the area, and the length would have to be 20 okay. times 20. Oh, okay. It's particularly exciting at these 7th and 8th grade years to see kids enjoying mathematics, coming to the math class and saying, I want to learn more today, I can learn more today. I have a mathematical mind. I can be a mathematician. And they're starting to see number through that lens. I think my role is to facilitate, if they're working in it with partners, to kind of facilitate the conversation, but not to give them the answer, ask you know, guiding questions, but to still allow them to struggle and still allow them to do that self-discovery of the math problem and the answer. What do we think? Those of you that think it's a hundred, that would go hundred, the perimeter's gonna be a hundred, raise your hand. Okay, those of you that think the perimeter's gonna be 80, raise your hand. Okay, so um, for those of you that think it's going to be a uh, hundred, um, why don't you talk to me about 
why do you think it's going to be 100? Why do you think it's going to be 100? Here's what I'd like you to do. With your partners, I want you to discuss what was the smart mistake in uh, the answer with, with 100? What was the smart mistake that was made here in this uh, particular problem? Because 100 times 100 times 100 times 100 equals like, or like a million or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, they're trying to find for each side at first, and if you were to add uh, 104 times that equal 400, which would be incorrect because the area and perimeter cannot be the same. Area cannot equal perimeter. There is some struggle, but the reward is so great that after you've worked so hard and persevered and really put their effort into it, they can see the reward of all their hard work with trying new strategies. I think that the growth mindset really has moved not only instructor pedagogy, but also student learning. It's very, very exciting to see. I think that growth mindset in mathematics has been a linchpin also to a growth mindset just in general for students to see that mistakes are okay. I can struggle. Productive struggle actually is a good thing. If I'm not actually struggling, wherein lies the learning?